Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I am IATF qualified auditor doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 18 years. I am again back with a very very interesting topic. What exactly is this fault tree analysis FTA? Well, in general life, we are doing some root cause analysis every time. Say for example, we are using a mobile and we find that uh, our messages are not going on WhatsApp. So we'll just try to find out is it some internet connectivity issue or maybe some storage issue because of that the message is not going fine or maybe the mobile is hung or something else. So we find out different reason and through that we try to find out what exactly is the root cause and then we take some action. Something similar is with FT also which is also called fault tree analysis. So if we talk about definition when we talk about fault tree analysis primarily it's a top down deductive failure analysis in which any undesired state of a system is analyzed using boolean logic to combine a series of low, low level events and you know there is a very common terminology prevention is better than cure so that is a key reason why we use uh, ft analysis and when we talk about fta there are different steps different uh, areas through which i am going to tell you about that so the different steps by which I'm going to tell you, it includes what exactly is FTA? Why do we use FTA? What is the five steps in which we can do the analysis with respect to that? If uh, this FTA tool is actually relevant for me, how does it actually work? And what are the strengths of FTA and how we can compare it with the other things? So to talk a little bit about the history about FTA, it was first started in 1960s in America when it was used in the missile program. And since then it is being used in different kind of industries in, including automotive, IT and other different kind of industries. So let's start with the first particular thing that what exactly is FTA. So when we talk about FTA primarily, as I said earlier, it's a common tool in which we use the different graphics and statistics to analyze an event and then predict that how and how often it will fail. And primarily it is used in engineering and business to aid the processes and the system development. Now it brings the next question that why do we use FTA? So again, there are three reasons with respect to that. The first one is that it is very easy to understand. Second, it is very an effective way uh, with respect to using a diagram problems in a system and then it helps the organization to understand the possible causes of the problems in a system and when we do the fta there are five key steps that we need to use to analyze the problem and to find the actual root cause so those five steps includes first of all it is to define and uh, understand the undesired event to study then second is to obtain an understanding of that particular system the third one is to construct a fault tree and to understand that. The fourth one is to understand that uh, uh, what are the cases which are relating to that. So evaluate the fault tree. And the last one is we control the hazards which are being identified. So if we see through a logical diagram that what exactly the fault tree diagram is. So if you see, you know, we are talking about a problem and then there is a logic gate and with this logic gate, there can be say two possible causes for that and if we take one cause further uh, which we also call as intermediate event and then if we bifurcate further it can also lead to two more logic gates and let's assume that we say that one is a basic event and another is an undeveloped event. So when we say basic event the intent is that that is a final root cause which is creating that problem and the other one may be a possible reason. Uh, which we don't want to go further into. If we take an easy example, let's assume that uh, there is any machine. It can be a mobile or a lathe machine or it could be anything. And there is a malfunction which is happening there. So that's a problem that we have defined there. Now, if we talk about the logic gate, there can be two possible things. One is a mechanical failure and the second is an electrical failure. Now, both of these can be considered as intermediate events. Now let's bifurcate further the electrical failure. So in electrical failure, if we go further, they can be assuming that two more possible failures that we call as the logic gate. So one is wiring harness issue and the second is the overload issue. So assume that we finalize that overload is actually causing the real problem 
and then we term that particular thing as a basic event and the other event of wiring harness we can call it as a undeveloped event. Now the next step is that how do a company decide that whether FTA is relevant for them or not. So there can be few questions the company can or maybe the employees can ask to themselves and that can help them to understand that whether FTA is actually relevant for them or not. So the first question is that if the company has the problem in their system or the process flow, if the system which is working under the worst case scenario and the third one is do external forces affect the system or not and if the answer of any of the question is yes, so it means FTA is actually relevant for that particular organization. So now the next step is how does FTA work? So there can be again three possible causes or three possible ways in which it can work for you. So first of all it uses a variety of gates and events to explain the system. Then it uses a top down approach to its logic and then the end result is at the top of the tree and that leads to what are the possible results that can come. As I said earlier there are different terminologies that are being used. So one of the very popular terminologies AND gate, A and D AND gate and there is a specific symbol to that. So primarily this is one of the main gate that is being used and this output occurs only if both the events below occur simultaneously. So only then we can term it as an AND gate. The second one is OR gate. So when we talk about OR gate this is the second main gate and it has a separate symbol with respect to that. So herein the output above will occur only if only one of the event is occurring. Only then we will say that yes it is an OR gate. And primarily there are three main events which happens in the fault tree analysis. The first one is primary event, then intermediate event and the third one is expanded event. To go further with respect to these three events when we talk about primary event, so primarily it is talking about some made up of basic undeveloped and external elements. So it is again bifurcating into three different kind of events. And in that uh, it is talking about an event where the process system might fail. When we talk about intermediate events, so primarily it is a combination of multiple different faults and it is shown by a rectangle in the fault tree and sometimes it is linked with the gates. And then thirdly, when we talk about the expanded event, so it's a basically we are talking about the complex event that needs another fault tree to explain. And in this the fault tree for the expanded event is not directly shown in the current fault tree because we need to show it separately. And the symbol which we are using it is a triangle by which we explain about the expanded uh, event. As I said earlier also this we are using a Boolean algebra which actually is a branch of algebra which started somewhere in 1840s wherein there are different variables which are talking about the different truth values, truth, true or false and primarily they are denoted by 1 and 0 and sometimes we also call it as a binary. To talk about some of the key strengths with respect to the FTA model, so the first and the most important strength is that it is a visual method. It is showing cause and effect relationship. It is easy to learn and follow. And primarily this particular complex uh, model is talking about the relationship in a very very understandable manner. Primarily it is using a probability model and it is scientifically sound because it is using Boolean algebra and it is a proven technique globally. Now to talk about some of the key differences between FTA and another popular tool which is being used with respect to the identifying some issues uh, before the event uh, that we call as FMEA. So some of the key differences between both of them, we start first with FTA, it is a deductive and top down approach. And when we talk about FMEA, it is inductive and it is a bottoms of analysis method. When we talk about FTA, it is primarily with respect to analyzing the complex systems. But when we talk about FMEA, primarily it talks about the single component and its failure and it then it analyzes it further. When we talk about FTA, it primarily it is very good in uh, showing the uh, single or multiple initiating faults. But when we talk about FMA, it is not very good in analyzing or examining the multiple failures. When we talk about FTA, it considers the external events. But when we talk about FMA, it does not consider the external events. FTA is not very good in finding all possible initiating faults. But when we talk about FMA, it is very good 
tool to exhaustively understand that all the possible initiating faults. So if I do a summary, quick summary with respect to the FTA model. So primarily it's an important tool. It's very simple to use. It's the graphics makes it easy to understand. And in this each event is displayed by unique shape and it helps to prevent and correct the errors in the system. To talk about some of the key challenges that industry is facing with respect to FTA, the first one is how often or how many organizations or the employees are aware about a tool called FTA. The second point is even if the people are aware about it, how often this particular tool is actually being used in industry, maybe as a preventive measure or maybe as a reactive measure. Well, my next video will again be similar in this particular chain and I'm going to talk about vibe analysis. Generally, I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping me to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. And in case you want to understand about this particular video in more detail, you will find a link below. If you click that, you'll find a blog there and there you will find this particular information in much more detail. And in case you are liking these kind of videos and blogs, you can always share with your friends and colleagues. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and my website, bhavimangla.com. Thank you.